I don't think there is something called honor killing from the Muslim point of view. Every, the, the, the question of enforcing the law, if there is any crime committed, it is not left to the individual. It is the function of the state, of the organized authority. Uh, however, if somebody is driven by cultural heritage and go and commit crime, he's still criminal, he's still to be punished. You might have some sort of mitigation due to the cultural background, but it's not permission to act against the law and to take the law in your own hand. This is on, on principle. The principle of justice and of Islam is that you cannot threaten either the life or the health or the possessions of anybody unless you have a strong justification which is held by a neutral uh, body like a court. The court can decide that this person should die, this person uh, should be punished, uh, his positions sh should be taken. But if I take the law in my hand and I make myself the judge and the executor and everything, it would be chaos. And I think that it has been proved during the last two or three decades that this sort of uh, violence did not solve anything. There are certain tribal customs in patriarchal Arabia that existed. And after the Prophet Muhammad, they came back into jurisprudence. They came back into somehow the fabric of that society. And it suited the men very well. So these traditions were continued. And especially when the Umayyads became the Khalifs and, uh, you know, they created a clergy, a self-proclaimed clergy, because Islam does not permit a clergy, does not talk about a clergy, but they created a, a group of uh, uh, clergy in order to indoctrinate the masses and to get their own work done. So, you see, a lot of, uh, a lot of things have evolved and come into practice which are really nothing to do with Islam proper because Islam said no very clearly. Islam was a religion of compassion, of love, of equality. As a matter of fact, when even when it talks of creation, it doesn't talk of Adam and Eve and Eve gave Adam the apple or Adam, a woman being created from man's rib. He says you're created from the same kind. Minha, that is the word. You're created from the same kind. And they both ate from the apple and they both sinned. And they both repented. There are several verses dealing with this. You know about all the discussion around dignity and honor and the tribes and the clans and the family. This is something coming from uh, the reading of what happened during the, the, the Mecca period or the Medinian period with the Prophet, uh, which is confusing between the rising of the Islamic principles and the social structure at that time. That yes, they were dealing with Arabs, they were dealing with tribes, and they had that. And Islam it's, it came to reform this understanding. They were in the tribal customs, things that were wrong, so to killing the people because you kill me and this kind of things, is something which was regulated from within the Islamic tradition. And now we are in some countries, for example in Turkey, dealing with uh, tribes and, and families obsessed with the honor of the, the family and the clan and saying this is Islamic. And they are confusing again what is Islamic and what is coming from here. There is nothing like uh, honor crimes in Islam. A crime is a crime and it has nothing to do with Islam because you are protecting your honor. And there is a principle that no one is going to to be uh, punished for something he didn't or she didn't uh, uh, do or haven't done. Uh, this is not possible. So, so you cannot just kill someone because of the honor of the family. So we have to say it. this is not Islamic. It's coming from very deep 
uh, uh, cultures and, 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 and attitudes that are confused with the Islamic principles of justice. And we read the, the, the principle of justice by putting them again in the very specific Arab culture of that time. But we have to distinguish them. What was done as the Arab culture during the 7th century is not Islamic per se. It was the culture of that time. Now we have the Islamic principle and with these Islamic principles we have to say honor killing. It's not Islamic. It's just something which is a very wrong interpretation of in which way uh, you have to protect your honor. You have to protect your, 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 the dignity of your family. And the only way is to promote uh, education, autonomy, and freedom, and then let the people choose. But to kill the people because they are not doing what you want them to do is, is not Islamic. It's not, it's not the, the, the real teaching. When you are dealing with, you know, honor killings when, within specific villages and specific environment, it's clear that it's coming from this very understanding of the, the, the tribes or the village or the people living there that they have this perception that, you know, we have to be pure and uh, there is our... And here we need to do something which is very deep, which is a, 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 to spread a better education, a better understanding of the, the whole process. They are, they are rooted and they are, uh, uh, in fact, in a kind of a cultural prison. They, can adjust, they are just dealing with this and they are just pushing in one side. And, and as they are uh, uh, seeing around them, westernization and things coming. If you do that, you are betraying us. So it's as if we are lost if you do that. It's the only way to protect us. So we kill you to protect us. And, and, and I think that really, it's, it, we, we can't understand that. We, can, we can't understand from where it's coming. To understand is not to justify. We have to condemn, we can't understand. So in order to give them more confidence or self-confidence in this collectivity, we need to come with a better understanding of what the Islamic principles are and what it is to be a, a dignified man and, and woman and not to come to simplistic you know, answer which are totally... Uh, undermining the, the, the society which is killing women. If we take the simple Quranic verse that no man, no person carries a burden of another person's sins or another person's burdens, then that could translate very easily into the fact that no woman should have to carry the burden of another person's honour either. But we continue to live, Muslim societies continue to model themselves primarily on tightly knit communities where women become the scapegoats for so many things. And girls of you know, younger years, teenage or late teenage years, become the most vulnerable in that society. And it's probably true to say that this is why so many societies still would prefer to have boys rather than daughters, or sons and daughters, because there is less fear, there is less fear for their vulnerability and their honour. I think it's very difficult to argue against why Women continue to bear the burden of so much. But what needs to be said repeatedly now, women need to voice it themselves, they can't wait for men to voice this, is that a woman can't be responsible for everybody's honour in her family. Um, and she cannot be held accountable for all that goes wrong in a family. And if, even if she has herself has done something wrong, she alone should not have to take full responsibility of why she made certain decisions. Because she belongs to a family, she belongs to a structure, she belongs to a community. If the community is there quick enough to condemn her, the community should also be there to support her. And what we see most of the time is condemnation rather than support, which is probably the reason why women do certain things in the first place that threatens to take them out of the community.